Would you like to get a band seven, eight or nine in your IELTS speaking test? Do you just want to improve your English fluency? Well, this is a video you have to see. Hello there, David from IELTS Teacher 365 here. In this complete IELTS mock speaking test, I play the role of a candidate from India, Amit. I really hope I said that right. In this video, I'll be giving you my own BAM9 native speaker model answers to real IELTS questions. And hopefully, plenty of ideas and language to help you improve your speaking and your IELTS bound score if that's your goal. Remember, pay attention to the language I use and my native speaker pronunciation. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Can you tell me your full name, please? Yes, I'm Amit Patel. And where are you from? I'm from India. I live here in Mumbai with my wife and two children. Can I see your identification, please? Yes, here you are. Thank you, that's fine. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? I work. I'm an accountant in a big multinational company and I've been doing this kind of work ever since I finished university. What do you like best about your job? Well, I love numbers, so I enjoy my job very much because accounting is all about working with figures. In fact, mathematics was always my favorite subject at school because I was very good at it. Is there anything you dislike about your job? Yes, of course there is. I don't think any job is perfect. For example, in accounting, you often have a lot of work at the end of each month and also at other times of the year. For example, when we have to present the taxes. And this means that sometimes during these busy periods, I have to work quite long hours. And this can be a bit stressful, especially when you have tight deadlines to meet. Let's talk about your country. What languages are spoken in your country? Well, India is an incredibly big country with the second largest population in the world. And so it has many different languages and even more dialects. Hindi is the most spoken language with more than 400 million native speakers and many people speak English as well. However, the language used by local people will very much depend on which part of India you're visiting. What are the most important industries in your country? Well, this is something I actually know quite a bit about. The biggest sector by far is the services sector which accounts for around 55% of India's gross national product. This comprises of the retail and wholesale sector, banking, real estate and the IT services sector. After that, we have the manufacturing sector, which is around 25% of the GDP. And then in third place is agriculture, with around 15%. Although this sector employs almost half of the population. Are there any sports that are unique to your country? Well, we do have some that I believe were invented in India. But as with most sports, there are now other countries playing them as well. One such sport is Kabaddi, which has different names depending on which part of the country you're in. And also different variations of how the game is played. But I think it's a very popular game and you can see it on television, although I've never played myself. Now, let's talk about animals. Do you like animals? Yes, very much so. Ever since I was a small child, I've been fascinated by animals and I used to love watching wildlife documentaries on television. 
And it didn't matter whether they were programs about marine life, mammals, reptiles or birds. I felt I was learning something about the world we live in. What animals can you see where you live? Well, in the city you can see a lot of stray dogs. And you can also see cows, which are sacred animals in India, as well as goats and chickens. I think Westerners find this strange when they come here because they consider these farm animals. And the monkeys are another animal that surprises foreigners when they come here for the first time. Tourists always want to stop and take photographs when they see them. Do you often visit zoos or wildlife parks? Well, I wouldn't say often, maybe once or twice a year. We have a very well-known wildlife park here in Mumbai, which I used to visit with my parents when I was a child. And nowadays, I like taking my own children there at least once or twice a year. It has many different species of birds, and you can also see leopards, crocodiles, snakes, monkeys, and of course, tigers. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. So here's some paper and a pen to make some notes. And here's your topic. Please don't write anything on the booklet. I'd like you to describe your favorite time of the day. Describe your favorite time of the day. You should say what time of day it is, what you usually do at this time, how you feel at this time, and why it is your favorite time of day. All right? Yes. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Well, to be honest, I like each part of the day for different reasons. However, I'm more of a morning person, so I'd have to say my favorite moment is definitely at dawn, just when the sun is coming up. Getting out of bed in the morning has never been a problem for me, because I'm an early riser. And once I'm up, the first thing I do is go to the kitchen and make a cup of tea. For me, this is definitely the most important drink of the day because it really wakes me up. Then I go into the living room and do 10 or 15 minutes of yoga. I started doing this about 12 years ago because I was having a lot of problems with my back and the stretching and deep breathing really helps me to warm up my muscles as well as the rest of my body. Then, after that, I have a light breakfast. For example, some fruit and a yogurt. And then I go out for a brisk walk. Because I've got young children, I find it easier to exercise first thing in the morning while they're still asleep. And I'm really lucky because my house is very close to a big park. What I enjoy most about my walk is how it makes me feel. I love the smell of the grass first thing in the morning and also the different varieties of plants and trees I can see in the park. And I especially enjoy the solitude because there's hardly anyone else around at that time of the day. So it's really peaceful. So to finish, I think the reason I like Daybreak the best is because it's usually the only time I get to myself. Thank you. How do you feel during the rest of the day? Well, as I said, my morning routine is essential because it prepares me not only mentally, but also physically for the rest of the day. So I feel as though I have more energy, which is really important because I have quite a demanding job. Thank you. Can I take the booklet and the pencil and paper back, please? Thank you.
We've been talking about your favorite time of the day, and I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. So, let's consider, first of all, time management. How important is it for people to manage their time effectively? Well, from my point of view, it's extremely important. I mean, when you manage your time effectively, the person who benefits most from this is you. First of all, because you ensure that you're spending your time on your most important tasks, either personal or professional. And secondly, it frees up more time that you can dedicate to other jobs or more fun and enjoyable activities. Do you think you manage your time wisely? Yes, on the whole, I think I do. What I like to do on Friday afternoon before I finish work for the weekend is to plan what I need to do the following week. I usually write a list of the most important tasks to be done and how long I need to complete each one. And once I've done that, I put them all on my weekly planner. And it's the same for me when I'm at home. I have a list of all the things that need to be done. For example, jobs around the house, things I need to buy, people I need to call, and so on. How important is punctuality in your culture? To be honest, I don't think that being on time is as important in Indian culture as it is, for example, in Western countries. One of the problems of living in a big city in India is that there are a lot of traffic jams and so it's difficult to move around the city. And for this reason, many people arrive late for appointments and meetings. However, I think as a result of globalization, the younger generation is adopting more customs from Western culture. And so more and more young people are giving importance to being on time. Let's go on and think about time in general. Do you think modern technology gives us more or less time? For me, without a doubt, more time. I mean, the whole purpose of technology is to make life easier for people by automating and computerizing tasks that used to be done by hand and took much longer to do. Take the washing machine, for example. In India, many millions of people still wash their clothes by hand, but this invention does the same job for you in a fraction of the time. And you don't even have to leave your own home. In what ways can people make better use of their time? Well, I think there are many ways that people can do this. In my opinion, most of us spend too many hours in front of the television, surfing the internet or chatting on mobile phones. For me, reading is one of the best things we can do with our free time because when we read, we gain an understanding of the world around us. I also think exercise is a very good use of our time and not only for our physical health, but also for our mental health. But for me, perhaps the most important way to spend my free time is in the company of family and friends. This is definitely time well spent. Do you think the pace of life is faster now than it was in the past? Yes, absolutely. I mean, nowadays we can travel anywhere in the world in less than a day, write and receive hundreds of emails, and consume new information literally 24-7. And as technology keeps on speeding up, so does our pace of life. I read recently that people who live in big cities are walking faster than they did a decade ago. And as a result of this need to go faster, we're seeing an increase in obesity all around the world as people turn to junk food instead of taking the time to cook a healthy meal. Another negative side effect seems to be the number of people suffering from stress nowadays as they become overloaded with work and new information. Okay, well, thank you very much. That is the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Goodbye. So, how did I, I mean Amit, do? What band score would you give him for part one, 
part two and part three. Leave me a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and click subscribe and the bell below so that you never miss the opportunity to improve your English and your IELTS band score. I'm David, thanks very much for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time. Thank you.